Howdy all, I am Adam the Renaissance Nerd, and I have willingly been avoiding talking about the Wheel of Time. I've avoided talking about the Wheel of Time show coming out very soon, this Friday in fact, because when I last decided to weigh in on it, I was met with harsh criticism by a bunch of stands, because I don't like the way it looks. There were red flags. We start with the race and the race swaps. They're all they're basically race swaps. The casting did not look good. And I made several comments and people took it harshly. And you know what? At the time of the channel, at that point, it was something I didn't feel like fighting over. So I took a step back. I took a step back, withstood the attack saying, you're not a real fan. You, you never notice when you disagree over something, the... Angry stands always go, you're not a real fan. Let's go full screen there. Well, no. These books look real to me. They've been read. I'm currently reading them again. The only reason you don't see my paperbacks is because they've been falling apart completely as I've been doing my reread this year. I mean, actually, since last year. I've been taking it slow because I'm reading a lot of books at once here. If, and you know, and then then there's a, this is my pride and joy of my my Wheel of Time collection right here. It's a copy of Fires of Heaven. I bought this in 1998, a hard copy copy hard copy version. When Path of Daggers came out, it's down here. You can't see it. Path of Daggers came out. Me and some friends in college found out that one Mister Robert Jordan was doing a signing. A mere 30 miles away. So we got in the car. I didn't want him to sign my copy of Path of Daggers because I wanted to still read that. So I bought a copy at the time of my favorite book in the franchise, Fires of Heaven. And one Mr. Jordan signed it for me. Right there. There it is. Robert Jordan's signature. You can't get that anymore because the man has passed away. I shook his hand. I thanked him. For all the great work he was doing, I thanked him for the inspiration he had given to me as a young writer at the time. And then he spoke to us for a bit. And then we, we ended our day and all went home. And I, uh, about, let's say a month later on a winter break, I read my copy of Path of Daggers. I wanted to wait till I got home for the winter break before I did that. So I am a real fan. I enjoy this series. It is a great series. I have my, I have my criticisms overall. But it is a great series. It is a foundational series. It is an important series in the world of fantasy literature. So when this show was announced years ago, before casting anything, I thought, oh, wow, they're finally doing this. Okay. And this is before the woke had completely set in in my brain. <sighs> well... Ever since we've gotten actual footage, casting this in, red flags have been all over the place in, on this show. Red flags are everywhere. My first foray into this, people didn't like what I showed them. So I shut up and I stepped back and I thought, I'm going to let it play out. More and more red flags have been coming up over the past several months. And here, with four days out, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, sorry, three days out. I can't count. I still can't do math. I try my best. Give me a break. With three days out, well, four days if you can include a day. Anyway, three days out. <laughs> <laughs> three days out here are the final red flags here are the final red flags and i'm just saying here's a warning to people who have been blindly worshiping this before even seeing it and they'll accuse me of blindly hating it before i've even seen it but coin two sides goes both ways you're you're not going to get what you want you're not going to get a faithful adaptation. They're not going to make it all the way to the end because this show is not really the Wheel of Time. We know for a fact that Brian Sanderson, who took over writing duties, Brandon, sorry, Brandon Sanderson. I don't know why I said Brian Sanderson. Brandon Sanderson, who took over writing duties when Mr. Jordan passed on, has been, was objecting to a lot of stuff going on. Finally, Mrs. Jordan, the widow Jordan, signed off on a lot of things, but still, there are red flags. And here are the final red flags. So, first article we're going to go over here. Wheel of Time, how hiding the dragon reborn will help the show stick its landing. 
Well, first of all, they're now saying that any of the Two Rivers Five could be the Dragon Reborn. They've aged them up, which is stupid, because it destroys kind of the whole point of their characters and their growth from teenagers to young adults throughout the entire series and all the things that are thrust upon them as they grow. This is Rafe Jenkins, the supposed guy who loves this so much, who is being so faithful to the story. One thing we're trying to hide from the audience is who the Dragon Reborn is. It's the mystery of the show as we start unravel to unravel this story. No, it's a mystery for one book. Eye of the World. By the end of Eye of the World, spoiler, we know that Randall Thor is the Dragon Reborn. You know at the end of the first book who the Dragon Reborn is. Plain and simple. It is not the mystery of the show. It should not be. This should not be a mystery show. It should be about people accepting destiny, people choosing destiny, people growing up, facing adversity. This is not the mystery of the show. So right away, red flag. People who've read the books know, of course, the first book is told from the Dragon Reborn's perspective. No, the, the book is told from several different people's perspective. It is not a first-person narrative of Rand and Eye of the World. The entire Two Rivers Five, plus Moraine, at some point, she is not the center character. The Two Rivers Five, they all have their points of view by the end. The final pages are Moraine in the book. Yes. So, this, the, right here, red flags. He's trying to deflect, saying, oh, it's an ensemble thing. We have all the different points of views. This show is the first fantasy series to have those points of views from women. Right away, virtue signaling. Boom. If you know this series, there are powerful women all the time. They don't need to have their points of view there pushed forward in front of the men. They're there all the time. Frustrating many times. Robert Jordan does an excellent job of writing frustratingly annoying women at times. Nine Ave is about as frustratingly annoying as you can freaking get. You want to just throw her off a cliff half the time until she finally grows the F up. But there's plenty of strong women. You don't need to have strong women have their POV for the first time right away. Problem. Red, another red flag in this statement. Rand's ascension to the Dragon Reborn status is a story that needs to be told over multiple seasons, Jenkins said, warranting a slow burn. Okay, final red flag. Multiple seasons? You know he's the Dragon Reborn by the end of Eye of the World. In The Great Hunt, he breaks off on his own and does his thing and until he finally understands that he has to accept it and has a moment at the end where he finally accepts he is the Dragon Reborn. Book three, he's off on his own. Rand isn't really in book three until the very end. Rand is not in the book, The Dragon Reborn, until the very end of the book. In that book there, you must have a strong rest of the cast, strong points of view, because the rest of that book is told through Egwene, through Matt, through Nynaeve, through a few other, through Perrin, through uh, several other characters. That's when you need that. But when you get back to Shadow Rising, Rand is back at the forefront again and remains at the forefront for everything. Rand is the center of it all. Everything else breaks off from Rand. So trying to tell us that it's a story that must be told, his ascension must be told over several seasons. Of course it has to be told over several seasons. He, he rises through 14 fucking books. This is stupid speak. Amazon's Wheel of Time, in contrast, is, be, is basing its first season around the perspective of Maureen Damodred, which is a mistake. It is a mistake. She's not the main character. This book should be Rand at the center. 
And apparently, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, season one is supposed to be the first two books. Eye of the World, The Great Hunt. Yet they're doing tons of off-camera scenes that happened before the book even started. And there's a problem with that. Already, now, I, you throw reviews, as far, you take reviews as far as you can throw them, but variety, shill variety. It's, a, it's one of the big shill sites out there. The Wheel of Time suffers from too much story told too hurriedly, TV review. So right away, it would seem the choice to do two books in one season is a massive mistake. Massive mistake. Amazon Prime Video's new television series, The Wheel of Time, based on the series of novels by Robert Jordan, draws upon a rich, deep history, or so this viewer, unfamiliar with Jordan's work, was left to presume when the show began with Rosamund Pike explaining the backstory and the stakes in rushed voiceover. You see, if you just told the books, adapt the debt, maybe not one for one, but as close to one for one as you can, you wouldn't have these problems. You don't need voiceover. You simply start. Part of the beauty of the Wheel of Time is as you read the books, you learn what happened in the past. When you start in Eye of the World, you have no idea what's going on in this world. Who A said I are. Who the dragon was after the prologue. You see the dragon losing his brain. You see Louis Theron Telemon losing his mind in the prologue of Eye of the World. After that, you have no idea what's going on. You don't, there should not be a voice or a part of the beauty of this series, of this franchise, is you, as it unfolds before you. Things get filled in. One of the coolest things in Shadow Rising, again, spoilers, is when Rand is going through his trial to pull the Aeel into his, into his armies. When he's going through the trial at Ruidin, he sees the past all the way back to where it all goes wrong. It's fascinating. And until that point, you don't know it. You don't know it. You don't need to know these things until the story, until the author thinks you do. But that's the problem with these people who adapt this stuff. I mean, you hear it right here. If you know anything about one time, Rand's romances are divided between three women in the end. He loves three women by the end of everything. He never really loved Egwene. He was infatuated with her because he thought that was going to be his life. It was kind of the girl in front of me, the girl that was always there. So here we go. This is an interview that was done with, with the actors who were playing Perrin and Rand. And at one point, they're talking to Rand about this. Joshua Stradowski. Asked about keeping secrets. Yeah. And it's also an ensemble piece. It's not a one-on-one -on -one adaptation of the books. Clearly, the fact that it's not a one-on-one -on -one has already hurt one major review. One major review. What? Why not tell a one-on-one? -on -one? Why must you adapt this to be a full ensemble cast? Why shouldn't it be centered about Rand? We definitely take the fundamentals of the books that we use in the show, but it's really an ensemble piece. What does that mean? I translate that to mean as it's not really Rand's story. It's an ensemble story. The Dragon Reborn, Rand Thor, is the centerpiece of the Wheel of Time. Everything else flows from him. And now they go into how he's, there's going to be romance with Egwene. They always felt things for each other, but it was never love. And by the time you're out of book two into book three, they both have realized this long time, long time. By the, start, by the time book four starts, it's done. They know it. And they knew it a long time ago because Elaine Trackend falls in love with Rand pretty much at first sight. And he gets that feeling from her. Min knows she's going to be involved with him. And Avienda, she fights it as long as she could, and she's the first one to pop his cherry. 
You're both in romantic relationships in a very different kind. So Randy and Egwene have kind of will they won't they thing going on right now. In your opinion, how committed to is Rand to Egwene? How committed? So committed. I don't think he could be more committed. See, that's wrong. Rand was never that committed to Elaine. He felt, no, sorry, Elaine, to Egwene. He felt powerful emotionally. He thought that that was where his life was going to go. And there was a sort of a, but it wasn't the deep, passionate love he has for his eventual three romances. So you see here, this is their, their, this is not, and I'm going to say it again, this is not the show you are expecting. That's all I'm saying to anybody who comes across this video. Take a moment, look at all the red flags, and understand this is not what you are expecting. This is not going to give you the tale that you have fallen in love with for decades. It's going to mishmash it up and apparently does a very poor job of it already. <sighs> you stands want to come at me. That's fine. I don't care. I am telling you truth. And if you cannot handle truth, if you cannot handle facts presented to you in cold, hard, harsh, purifying sunlight, that is on you. And if you watch it and enjoy it for what it is, great. But just remember, I have been saying this from the beginning. This is not Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time. This is Amazon's Wheel of Time. And it is not going to give you the satisfaction you've been seeking for a live action adventure of Randall Thor and his friends for decades. All right, I'm done. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, a like would be appreciated for whatever it's worth now. If you're new here, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Odyssey as well. I'm here to earn your trust, earn your support with straightforward, honest takes as I fight to return escapism to entertainment. Hit the notification button. Share my video if you like what you're preaching, what I'm preaching, what I'm preaching, not you, me. And comment away. Comment is, commenting is one of the best things you can do. You do not have to agree with me, but normal people can still find common ground and get along when they have difference of opinions. We are not SJWs. We are not crazy out of their gourd stands. I don't care what they think. I will never care what th they think because they are cowards behind keyboards. And if you don't pay attention to them, they have no power over you. So thank you again for watching. Take it easy. Thanks for watching, everybody. I don't do Facebook. I will never do Twitter. If you want to reach out to me, just email me. It's purely for this channel. I will not miss your communication. Check me out at the Geeks and Gamers forums under at Roas. Join me in conversations there, among many others. And I'm now on Odyssey, at the Renaissance Nerd. Follow me there as well. Help us keep fighting to return escapism to entertainment. Thank you again for watching. See you next time.